Okay, so I want to start. Uh, I'm good to go. I want to start this morning first off by talking about some getting started issues, and then I'll be followed by three other folks who will uh, address getting started in digitization from various perspectives and some of the challenges. Um, one of the first things I want to say is there is no right way to do this. If you go from institution to institution, you find so many different uh, institutional barriers and institutional opportunities uh, that really define how you end up digitizing your collection, that there is no right way. So if you think you're going to leave here with a consensus, correct way to do something, you will not. Uh, we had a big workshop back in May uh, last year so that we could develop, get this, a consensus workflow for digitization across all collections. We gave that goal up by about 8.30, a quarter to nine the first morning, and we ended up working on workflows for all these various collection types, and then realized that even within a particular discipline, even digitizing fish, you're not going to all do it the same way, and that's fine. You have to deal with, um, you have to deal with institutional parameters. So, um, so the thing that I see is most important, probably most people in this room are a little bit like me. I'm very practical, pragmatic. I like to do the detail stuff, and sometimes, sometimes, um, I dive right in without really making a plan. And I think that that really has affected some success of some digitization programs. So I think you have to assess your goals from the very outset, and then you have to reassess those goals all the time to make sure that your program is moving in the direction that your institution through your policies and plans has decided it wants to go. So I'm gonna talk about that just a little bit. Um, so the first thing I want to do is do a brief introduction to IDIC Bio so that you know of what we're all about. IDIC Bio is a collaborative agreement or a collaborative uh, partnership between the University of Florida and Gainesville, Florida, and Florida State University and Tallahassee, Florida. Make no mistake about it, that differentiation is a big deal <laughs> in Florida. So uh, I'm at Florida State, Deb's at Florida State, Kevin's at the other schools. <laughs> and I'm in Gainesville. Uh, and, and we're happy to have uh, Actually, our office is down in Gainesville. Uh, so we're collaborative, uh, and NSF has designated us as a national resource for digitization. So our job is to try to coordinate uh, training, workshops, sharing, uh, and building tools to make possible digitization at all levels. So it's a really fun job, gets it into lots of places, and we're, we think we're doing a pretty good job at it. They haven't taken our money away yet. Um, so, Part of what we do is facilitate biodiversity data that addresses important questions, and I'll talk about that a little more in just a minute. Uh, we want to enable digitization of collections data across all collections types. Uh, when we first, when we first um, announced this workshop or planned for this workshop, we didn't know yet whether there was going to be a wet collections TCN. Uh, there is, so uh, we're, uh, we were wondering whether we would get a turnout. So, this turnout tells me that it's an important issue uh, and it's the kind of stuff that we're trying to do. So we also want to provide portal access. We're building a portal that folks can contribute their data to, which will be more or less of an aggregator, slightly different than GBIF. Um, in GBIF, there's a, a standard that you meet to, to send your data, and we want to be all things to all people. So we're very interested in making our data element list grow as we determine there are new needs in the community that we need to meet. So we're not closed and we're not trying to force everybody into the same keyhole. We're trying to make the keyhole fit everybody. So it's gonna be an interesting challenge. Uh, we've had test data in and we are now about to release a version of the portal that will be uh, that will include lots of real quote, real data. So we're really looking forward to uh, that happening over the next month or so. And then we're also beginning to work on long-term uh, long sustainability of this effort. I think everybody in this room is concerned about that because you know you get an NSF project and you work yourself to death for three years. You don't get started until the second year because you can't get organized. Uh, and then you finally get started, or even two years, and then you kill yourself to finish, and you turn in your final report, and you're out of money, and you've still got a lot of digitization you still want to do, so how do you do that? So that sustainability effort on the long term is something that I think I was extremely interested in, and it's just begun uh, a working group try to address. So we, we hope to address over the next, we have eight years left in our project. Over the next eight years, we hope to come up with some type of a sustainability plan. So ADBC, Advancing Digitization for Biological Collections, involves schematic collections networks. NSF decided a couple, three years ago that it wasn't the best way to spend money to uh, fund individual institutions to do individual digitization. We needed to do 
taking more of a uh, thematic approach around research questions. And so in the first year of ADPC, three institutions or three networks were funded. And then last year, another four were funded. Presumably, we'll have another three or four funded shortly. Uh, if you look at the website of NSF, you'll see that they have planned for sequestration. So we're hoping that the uh, sequester doesn't actually affect us dramatically, at least this year, and we'll see what happens. But NSF is aware of that and planning for it. So these are the first seven. Uh, these seven institutions are scattered, our seven network are scattered all over the country with very interesting um, uh, projects. And uh, right now we have about, at best guess, 130 plus institutions. Kind of really hard to guess because some institutions end up as more than one TCN and then we add these uh, partners to existing TCNs and they get added to the list. And so counting is difficult. We think we've got every state in the U.S. covered except South Carolina. So if you're in South Carolina or know somebody from South Carolina, uh, let me know. We'll work with those folks and see if we can get them into a TCN somehow so we can have all states. Um, so I'm not going to explain this. This is our private infrastructure team. But suffice it to say that we're trying to build a cloud-based environment for folks to store their data. Um, we're into a new era of databasing, as far as I'm concerned. We have moved above this, my database, my institution, original record here. Nobody else has the original record. We're, we're moving beyond that. We're now moving to another level in our databasing, where the records are out there uh, in, the in the cyber infrastructure uh, across the world. And figuring out how to track those is very important. And Deb will talk about that a little bit uh, more this morning, or tomorrow morning, about how to track things and, and how important this cloud-based environment is to, to what we're trying to do. And we want to work consistent, consistently with our stakeholders, you guys, um, so that we are meeting needs of the community, not meeting the needs of the IDV. That's very important. OK, so now I'm going to move into um, getting started with digitization. So I mentioned that I think you have to think about global goals. And for me, there are about three primary reasons to do digitization. One is we want to create really strong, scientifically useful data, which was the purpose of the TCNs to begin with, to really think around a research question as you begin to digitize so that we digitize data that's useful throughout the scientific community as well as the public. So that's a very important goal, this output level goal. And then there's a, uh, the next level goal is, is our constituents. You know, collections for a long time have known that if they can build a constituency, they have a much better chance of surviving and making it if there is a constituency in the public and in the scientific communities to support those collections. So we really want to build uh, high quality exposure for these collections. And this is a good way to do it through digitization, getting these data out on the web, getting images out on the web, letting folks of all stripes uh, access our data and utilize it. So very important, very important. And the third is, we have to think about an improvement level. Workshops like this, people coming together, sharing with each other. I think we go back to our institutions. And you know, if you're in Ithaca, um, way off out in Northwest New York, then you know it's sometimes difficult to maintain connections with other folks. And I think that's a very important thing that all of us have to do, is work on collaborative models and methods, sharing information. It's one of the things we want to do through the Attic Bio website and wikis. The wiki set up for this workshop and others is really designed for people to upload information and put stuff out there. So if you've got workloads that are working for you, they don't have to be pretty. We just want them out there because people will not use them the way you've written them. They will dissect them, take them apart. The first thing that happened when I we finished the entomology workloads, Neil Cobb from Northern Arizona University emailed me. He said, yeah, this is great, but I don't need a PDF. Send me the Word docs because we're going to take them apart for our, for our uh, TCN. So that's a very important thing. We want to take all this information and let people collaborate and use it together. So very important. So I think you really do have to begin in a very global way. You have to think, what are the global continuum that guide your decision making before you start a program and as you continue so that you know the overall goal that you're heading for? I think most people in this room, if you're like me, are not great at this. Um, I mean, collection folks are working with objects all the time, right? so you're dealing with details. You've got to think globally to make this work. Because those global continuum, and I'll show you some of these in a minute, develop into local policies and then those to specific workflows and getting things done in your institution. But those workflows have to support that global assumption or global goal in your organization. So I sold this from the library folks. 
And I want to say, and I think Sally may talk about this a little bit, I want to say that you really should take advantage of the other um, organizations in your institution. Explicitly, the library. We have had very good relationships with folks in libraries across the country and across the institution. Library science people, information science people and institutions feel like it is their obligation as an information scientist to take information in a collection and help get that information disseminated and distributed. And they are very, very good at digitization, way ahead of us. So building those relationships with library folks and, and information scientists is a really good move. Um, the head of our institute is a the information scientist, Gregory Carter. So I mean, it's a very natural connection. Um, so the science people, the you know, library science people, they say, you know, when somebody comes in and they want to digitize material, you can take a short view of the long view. Short view, view means I'm going to give you a copy and you can leave, and then when somebody else comes in and wants it, i got to make another copy. That's the short view, conserves resources, gets the job done, makes the patron happy, they're gone, and you hope that nobody wants that for a while, so you don't have to do it again. The long view says, if somebody orders something, do the whole schmear. Do the digitization, get it stored, get it cataloged, get it put away, so that the next person that wants it, you have it. Now, obviously, resources limit that long view in some instances, and I'm not suggesting that the long view is the best way, there's no value laden terms here, and the short view is the worst way, but it is a decision you have to make at an institutional level. What are you going to do? Are you going to look at the long view, or are you going to look at the short view, and you've got to be willing to give up on both of those ends something. Um, so some of the things that there's some pressure, I'm not going to go through this, you can read that, but you know, I hear that there's so much data and there's so little time. I mean, I've got three years of NSF, I've got 100,000 records, how can I get this done? Now, why did I say 100,000? They probably would have funded me a kid. You know? <laughs> that, that's, but that's the bottom line, it's that kind of stuff that we're up against to make these long-term uh, decisions. Another one that I really like is, let's just take pictures and use them. And if we had good technology for data mining labels and all of that so that we could actually search those pictures and pull data out, important ecological data, that'd be great. Not quite there yet. So that's sort of a short-term solution that may or may not work. You just have to decide for different decisions. Um, another good one is do the minimum now and enhance it later. You know, Scarlett O'Hara said, we'll just do it tomorrow. Well, that's exactly what that do the minimum now and enhance it later. You've got to be sure that you really stick to that enhancing it later. Like the kid that graduates with a bachelor's degree, I said, I'll go to get my master's degree in two years, and they never come back. It's that kind of, it's that kind of mentality. Um, so there are some tools that favor the short view, you know, hopefully. What that means is that we'll do the short view now, we'll hope the tools are developed in four or five years that we can go back and more effectively do some of the stuff we didn't do the first time around, like using OCR and calculating and processing, and you know, working on a group, uh, working group with that. Um, data mining labels, robotic technologies like conveyor belts and all that, things we haven't even thought about. Uh, some post digitization tools for curation and quality control. Uh, lots of stuff that, that might, um, might, might help us take a short view and still come out okay later. So here's some of these um, continuum. I'm not going to go over every one of them. But um, so current tools versus potential future tools. Do you want to wait? One that's most important to me is. Maximum fitness versus quantity. When I say maximum fitness, I'm not saying, again, that's not value laden, but you have to think about that. When we started digitizing the uh, herbarium at Florida State University, we decided we would do every record fully populated all day. Okay? Looked at all those cabinets, 